<laughs> Fort Worth and I are not in the same location today, so this is going to be fun. So you miss out on his uh, Welcome to the Buddy Show live, uh, but I am Buddy, your resident sex expert, and I am here to have a great conversation with you today. I love our Sunday mornings together. Uh, this is quickly becoming a very real part of my um, day. So I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, Fort Worth is still going to be fielding your questions and comments uh, from our home base. And so feel free to just continue as always with commenting on things, uh, sending in your questions fielding your experiences and answering the questions that he's lifting up there. And he's going to get them to me so I don't miss out on anything. So just like usual, except you don't get to hear Fort Worth's voice in, um, in a behind the curtain, shall we say. So I'm sorry that you have to miss out on that. Today's topic is three things that women are most deceptive about. And I think that this is a fascinating topic because biologically, men and women um, just operate under a different set of rules. I believe it's really easy to our detriment to um, assume that humankind is all alike. And in all actuality, we just have so many um, nuances and things that we're raised differently depending on our gender. We are raised differently depending on our race, religion, creed, where in the world, literally where in the world we're being um, raised. So there's just so many things that go into why we do what we do when we do it and how we respond to certain things. All this being said, uh, I swear I am not um, <laughs> trying to be an apologist for women's bad behavior. So I just want to make that very clear from the front end that uh, I'm not suggesting that it is a moral, ethical thing to do to, for women to be deceptive in their relationships with you. Uh, I'm just telling you that there's a reason they do it. There are reasons they do it. There are reasons they do it. Uh, without necessarily thinking about it and um, I want you to just better understand why women do what they do across the board so that you can better play into your hand play them into your hand bring them into your frame and hold them there rather than you constantly falling into their frame which is a terrible place to be so that's why we do what we do Talking about girls and deception is a loaded topic. Um, men are often along the lines of we're biologically just different. Just because we're male and female doesn't mean that we all think alike, act alike. Women are not uh, men without dicks. So humankind is, is just a loaded um, title for men and women because we're very, very different and this is one of the big ways that we are. Men approach things with objectivity and are much more like in control of the way they think and the way they answer things. Um, I think that they value honesty, objectivity, uh, a lot more than women do. Women have to always have, have that future goal in mind, how what I do or say here is going to affect my life here. These are all critical things that we deal with every single day. Uh, so we have to be very cautious about that. Men are often taken aback because men are straightforward. If you don't want to answer a question as a man, oftentimes you'll make a joke of it You'll just avoid it completely. You'll divert uh, and, and move on. But a lot of times, most men I find just kind of make a playful joke of what's being asked, kind of like the agree and amplify kind of thing, where you make a, make a tease out of it, 
you get her laughing, she forgets she asked you a question in the first place, and you move on with your life. Women, on the other hand, have an innate inability to do any of those things. So instead of diverting attention, women attempt to give a straight answer. Uh, and that's often not a straight answer at all. It's, this is where the deception comes in and women are often deceptive rather than uh, being straightforward or just diverting what they don't want to answer. So if you ask a, a woman a question that she does not want to answer or she doesn't want to give a straight answer, she will actually lie. She'll actually be deceptive about it. She'll actually uh, have a lie of omission or an outright lie. Um, big or small, and a lot of times it doesn't even matter what the topic is <coughs> or how critical it is that she answer the truth. It's very strange that we do this, but a girl will give, <coughs> sorry, a girl will give a completely inaccurate answer to avoid not answering at all. Where men will give a teasing answer to avoid answering a question straightforward that they don't really want to answer. Fort Worth is really good at this. He makes me laugh all the time. I laugh, I roll my eyes, and I forget that I ever asked him a question that he didn't want to answer. Morning, Turk. Um, so girls are not, are not great at answering questions directly at all. And I'm sure you guys have plenty of experience with this, uh, whether you see it in the moment or you know from hindsight uh, that that you've were times where you've asked questions and you just have kind of gone like that doesn't even make any sense when she answers. A lot of times girls will answer in a way that you just kind of go, that can't be true. That just can't be true. And again, a lot of times the girls will actually be answering things that she could have just told the truth and it actually been no skin off anyone's nose. But because of all of this um, differentiation between the sexes, guys are often fooled because they're projecting their own attitudes uh, and beliefs and behaviors about lying onto the female that they're talking to. So men ask a girl a question, they know that they are moral, of sound judgment, objective, uh, and not deceptive. So they assume that they're going to get that in return, and that's often not the case at all. There is a, there is a really strong reason, though, that biological correlation as to why women are just naturally deceptive. Not only is it just in our DNA, and I'll tell you why, but we're also trained up from a young age uh, by watching and observing and being genuinely taught by the women in our lives, our mothers, our aunts, uh, our friends, our big sisters, whatever the case may be, movies. The reason that girls are so trained to lie or be deceptive to men is it's genuinely dangerous for women to anger men. It is a dangerous thing. There's a, there's a strength disparity. Um, there's a size disparity. There's the fact that uh, even the weakest men are often stronger than the strongest women. And so there's a strength disparity. All, you know, we, we laugh all the time about um, if a guy is, is, says, you know, hit me in the arm, you know, hit me as hard as you can. And she's just wailing on him. And to, to you guys, whenever we're mad and like hitting on you or playing with you or play pension or whatever, you can hardly feel it. <laughs> like it, it genuinely hardly comes up. Like it's not even on your radar. And that's, the, that's true for the weakest of men and the strongest of women. Unless you are fighting some prize fighter, you know, chick, you probably are not gonna notice when she's swatting at you. So. It is genuinely a dangerous thing for women to upset or anger men. So we tend to walk around on eggshells quite a bit. Uh, we tend to avoid any kinds of um, 
risks to our survival, shall we say. It's in our DNA to be cautious about angering men. So let's get into the three specific topics that women tend to be the most deceptive about. And I think you're actually gonna be surprised at number one. Uh, I think all of you are assume that, assuming number one is actually my number three. So let's see, let's see. The number one thing that women are most deceptive about is their spending. Women will often um, just be deceptive about how much stuff costs. I think just to drive the point home initially, think of the, uh, the example of Starbucks. There's a running joke that, you know, women, women will, be, will go to Starbucks every day. We always have a Starbucks cup in our hands. It's just what we do. But it's so, it's easy if we have a kid with us, it's easy if we're having food there as well, it's easy if we have a girlfriend with us or if we're meeting you and wanna take you a treat. It's easy for us to spend $20 a day, let's say, on average at Starbucks. One 15 minute trek through a Starbucks uh, line and you can spend upwards of almost $8,000 a year just in sugar bomb overpriced drinks and i'm i'm as i'm as guilty as the rest of them make no mistake i'm i'm your basic white girl i love my coffees <laughs> and uh actually after this show i'm going to get coffee not at starbucks but at another place but this is this is part of our daily routine more often than not is a starbucks drive through now to you that coffee that's in our hand may may have cost three dollars on the top end you have no idea that it cost eight dollars that the protein box that we got along with it because we were being healthy cost another eight dollars that we had the dog in the car and we got a puppuccino for however much those cost you know that we were taking our girlfriend a drink because she was under the weather, that we were going to see our massage therapist next. And so we were taking all these ways that it adds up to spending $20 a day just in that 10 to 15 minute Starbucks line adds up. But you think we've spent $3 and we've actually spent 20. Um, <laughs> Fort Worth teases me all the time because um, <laughs> because I will absolutely agonize over $150 purchase, you know, sneakers, uh, anything that I, I dress for an event, anything that I genuinely need and will genuinely use, I will agonize over $150 purchase. And yet I will spend two seconds buying 10, $15 items without a thought. This is girl brain, this is how we think. This is why we are deceptive with our spending. This is why this is number one, because you rarely know what things cost and we rarely are honest about what things cost. So there's a huge disparity in truthfulness uh, and objectivity uh, in between the, this, this giant gap. Um, if she, if you guys, you and your wife or you and your girlfriend live under um, kind of an allowance system where she has uh, maybe her own account or a set amount that she's allowed to spend on household items uh, each week or month or however you lay it out. A lot of times, a lot of times, that money will go to Starbucks, uh, manis and petties, facials, massages, uh, play shopping, you know, she always needs something to wear uh, or a new new shoes new candles new coffee I mean you name it and we will just blow through money just blow through it and then oftentimes she will come to you and say that she needs more money for the groceries that she's supposed to be using this allowance on so keep all of this in mind whenever she's coming to you and she says she needs more money or she needs money for this or that uh, purchase because that's genuinely a need for you or your family because oftentimes 
it's not been spent because she is spending it wisely or spending it on what the the budget is actually meant for she's actually spending it on all of her extracurriculars that she doesn't think of as extracurriculars and that um, that you don't really have a concept of what they cost so massages manis petties all of this is is hundreds of dollars a week so I just want you to keep this in mind if she says she got a 90% off coupon and that's why she bought this new you know painting for the wall that's inaccurate those don't exist if she said she paid for it with points that's very unlikely and you have to do a lot of spending to make that happen if she says that uh, it was a, a big sale unless it's Black Friday or the day after Christmas that's probably not accurate I remember one time when I was first married I wanted to get this mirror I still have this mirror I love this mirror it was it's 25 years old and I adore it but I bought this mirror when my mother came to town one weekend we went to Pier 1 which you know is very expensive or it was then and I had saved up cash for this mirror I remember it was $65 it would be a it would be a $400 mirror now my husband asked where it came from I told him that my mother bought it for us because I knew if he knew that I had been saving money number one or number two spent our money on a mirror he would have been absolutely irate so I told him my mother bought it I might let my mother know that she bought it and she understood the reason because we have to biologically protect ourselves from angering you so in all areas of life women have to be deceptive about our spending it's just the way that we are wired and it's the way that we've been trained by by not wanting to upset the men in our lives so that's number one the number one thing that women are deceptive about is their spending now I have a question that Fort Worth just sent me I'm pretty excited about it um, any suggestions on identifying girls that will be more conscious or frugal with a man's money yeah any way to retrain a spender um, I think this is a great question and uh, a great point of reference and closure to this this section of the conversation girls who respect your money will will show that from the front end so number one I believe that they're more appreciative when you do spend money on them whether it be in the form of events dates gifts whatever the case may be any kind of financial favors that you do her she will appreciate it significantly more if she is respectful of your money it makes a huge difference but it'll tell you a lot about the kind of girl she is and the kind of spender she is also um, if she's like this she will be extremely grateful for anything that you're doing for her she will think everything is expensive she'll think everything is fancy I she doesn't have to have been from the sticks or be completely naive to the world to have this kind of adoration and appreciation for you and your money but it just shows that she was raised to have a healthy respect for money it shows that she is uh, grateful for the things that you do for her and it just goes a long way of sh for her showing her respect for you and your money and that genuinely generally lasts a lifetime uh, girls are very often unless you let's say on the extreme side win the lottery and she just loses her fucking mind you know a lot of girls will who are respectful of your money on the front end of the relationship will continue to be throughout their lives together retraining a spender I would say is a great idea I think it's very difficult and it takes a really strong frame but I think it can be done I'm not trying to dissuade you from trying because I think the the main thing that you have to do is set a budget for this girl 
do have an allowance situation or whatever you want to call it where she has access to just a set amount of money and if that card is declined at the register and she's embarrassed by it that's on her if she says she needs more money in order to make expenses the answer is no she'll only do it a few times she'll only flub up like that a couple of times and then she'll get on track and she'll learn to better track her spending she'll learn to better um, budget her money through the days or the weeks depending on how frequently you you give her that budget and and she'll get on track with understanding that when you say no it means no so i i think this is a really great way to live your life especially as you're married especially once the children come uh, it's, I think it's just a really good idea to have a set amount of money for the woman in your life because otherwise we will, we will continue to spend as long as the card keeps going through and with, with very little thought to other bills that need to be coming out or anything else that that money has to go towards. So please keep that in mind. Um, and also, if you like your wife to have you know nice looking hands and manicures if you know she's used to getting her hair done every other week if all kinds of things you have to you do have to factor into that budget so don't don't give her a, a cutthroat budget just because you don't want her to spend a lot of money if you're used to if you're used to your wife not having gray roots if you're used to your wife having nails if if a little bit of pampering that she does goes a long way in your attraction for her be sure and keep that in the budget but she will only go over budget a couple of times before she learns that no means no she's not getting more money and um if that means that she can't buy groceries this week that's on her uh and i will add i'm not suggesting you starve your children there are, there are other ways that you can work around that. Uh, but then if you have to go to the grocery store with her because she's, okay, in this scenario of retraining a spender, let's say that she blows through her weekly budget and she still needs groceries. You take her to the grocery store. She gets the barest of bare minimums. She gets the cheapest of cheap foods because she needs reminders that the discount brand is in the cabinet that we're eating a lot of rice and ground beef for meals that you know whatever the cheapest the cheapest meats whatever the cheapest vegetables across the board that you are living at a bare minimum budget for survival for the rest of that week and when she has to watch her children and you and she has to figure out creative ways to make the cheapest of cheap uh, desirable and healthy and uh, not hear you all complaining about what she's fixing all week she will that will that will like bear into her brain and she will not ever want to experience that again all right moving on up number two the number two thing that women are the most deceptive about deceptive about is their time man Guys, I have girlfriends who will go on and on about being up until 2 a.m. working on a project or cleaning the house or doing laundry or packing for a trip. And they, they martyr themselves because of how busy they are. The problem with this is the reality is that all day long, that same woman was sitting in her spot on the couch in that corner, scrolling her phone, talking to her friends, watching the television, whatever the case may be, whatever her time-wasting event is, if she is still up late, even once you get home from work, if if that woman is still up late bustling around and I don't have to, I didn't have time and I didn't have time and I didn't have time and I have to get this done it's because she wasn't efficient and effective with her time through the day so maybe she works maybe she works outside of the home uh, and that certainly is a factor 
But at the same time, when you hit the door, all it takes is five minutes per room to get a, a room straightened up. All it takes is 10 minutes to get one load of laundry in and one load of laundry out. Fold it real quick. It's busy is just an excuse for poor time management and women are notorious for using this excuse uh, to deceive their husbands or their boyfriends, the men in their lives, that they um, are just so busy. Because women love to be busy, but we apparently hate to be productive. So I'm not quite sure why that is. You know, a lot of, and anymore, you'll see more girls who, um, have plenty of time to do TikToks all day, watching or creating them themselves, uh, but then, you know, are rattling pans for dinner as soon as you walk in the door, like they haven't had time to prepare anything. It's bizarre behavior, but I see it all the time, even in my own girlfriends. They're just so busy. I just don't know where the time went today. I'm just so busy. I started working on fill in the blank, whatever the excuse is, some just random project that they pull out of their ass. And I looked up and it was three o'clock. I just don't know where the time went. If you've ever heard these kinds of excuses or reasons from your girl, the real reason is that she is poor at time management. Does, are there any questions or concerns or things that you've seen uh, around poor time management and your girls? Number three, and this is the one that you're all seeing coming. Number three thing that women are the most deceptive about is definitely men. And this goes from sexual partners to just other men in their lives, okay? So how many times in your life have you actually found out that the girl that you are seeing or sleeping with was deceptive about the number of partners she's had? or the number of partners she currently has. <laughs> no matter how many men a girl has slept with in her life, we have a running joke, but, but stereotypes are based in reality. She will say it's three partners. She will say that she had her high school boyfriend, her college boyfriend who became her husband, and you, you're number three, lucky you. So the number three thing that women are most deceptive about is definitely their the men in their lives. Um, if you are running a rotation of girls through your bedroom, be sure to know that he, she probably is running a rotation of men as well. Uh, you are not exclusive in this. Most women are not being, um, being, having sole eyes for you if if they know that they are part of a rotation because sometimes that's kind of hard on a woman's psyche to do that but she will do all that she can in her power to protect you from knowing about the other men that she is running so she women are notorious for being able to hide men from one another so make no mistake if you're running a rotation of girls all of the girls in your rotation probably at least three quarters of them are also running their own rotation. So always keep that in mind. Very rarely will you actually know a woman's notch count. So very rarely do you know the actual number of men a woman has slept with or is currently sleeping with. Besides sexual partners, and I find this really interesting, and I think that mo it's, it's a blinder for most men. Besides sexual partners, women will also hide other not sexual relationships with men from you. So a lot of times they won't mention their husbands. I mean, they won't mention their husbands. They won't mention their fathers. They won't mention their uncles or their brothers, even sons. They won't mention their ex-husband. They won't mention male co-workers because women know that you as men are very uh, hyper aware of other men in her vicinity that are influencing her decisions because maybe you've had a bad experience where an ex-girlfriend or an ex-wife uh, trusted her father's opinions over yours 
everything was, every decision was, well, let me let, ask dad what he thinks. You know, things like that, things of that nature. That is a very strong normative thing because women are raised, we go from our father's house to your house and anything in between is just, is just kind of muddy water. We cannot be trusted to make our decisions. We have to have a man in our lives to make these decisions. So if you're new on the scene in her life, there was a man before you. Maybe it was her dad. Maybe it was her ex-husband. Maybe it's a gay best friend. That doesn't count. But there are, there are always men in her life because she needs the male influence in order to make some solid decisions. But we will hide those men from you uh, and along with the orders in our life. I think that it's a, a real blind spot for men to consider the fact that all girls, almost exclusive of attraction levels of that girl, have a continual running number of orbiters in her life that are really just uh, waiting for their opportunity as far as they're concerned to jump in and try to gain her sexual attention. Women hide orbiters because any mention of guys who are tripping over themselves to be in her sphere automatically trigger warning signs for you, the men, because you assume that she is doing something to gain that male orbiter's attention. And oftentimes, she's just existing. Unless she is posting Instagram ass pictures or, you know, shooting gym selfies on the, on the adductor, abductor machine, she's likely not doing a, a whole lot to gain your, to gain orbiter attention or detract from you. She mentions you often in conversation. She references you. She tries to be with you and in the presence of you. She's very clearly with you as often as possible. But the bottom line is all girls have orbiters. And, uh, but we don't like to tell you about them because we don't want to trigger any kind of um, concern from you that maybe we're doing something that we shouldn't be doing to gain that kind of orbiter attention. So again, that biological need to keep ourselves safe and to not anger you makes us deceptive. What are some other areas that you have seen of girls being deceptive? I have, I have a little bit more on my list that aren't in the top three but there's still areas that you need to be cautious and aware of. Uh, girls cannot be honest about the mistakes that we make, whether it be a door ding, a fender bender, bad driving, a ticket. Uh, we will dig our heels in whenever we have made a mistake of any kind and adamantly just fight tooth and nail, uh, even when we know that we're in the wrong. So <laughs> it's, it's bizarre behavior, I know, but girls just, we don't like to be wrong because it just continues to prove that we cannot be trusted to make sound judgments without your input. Consumption, eating and drinking. We are terrible at regulating this like we are at regulating spending or regulating a lot of other things like hormones or emotions. So whenever you ask a girl what she's eaten today, you will not get a correct answer. Just don't even bother. You know, just don't even bother. And I know that I'm a little bit jaded because Fort Worth and I have been in fitness for so long. So we deal with the general public, especially surrounding the topic of consumption. Uh, and so we're, we're a little bit jaded on this topic. But make no mistake that even the girlfriends that I have, they will say they haven't eaten anything all day. They're not counting the, the you know, 40 gram of fat Starbucks sugar bomb that they had for breakfast or the, the banana nut loaf that they got with it. They're not counting the donuts that were in the office when they got there in the break room. They're not counting 
the 15 cups of coffee that they drank with cream and sugar. They're not counting the half a sandwich that a coworker gave them uh, when they were feeling a little bit noshy mid-morning. They're not counting the candy on their desk. They're not counting the, the fiber bar that they had as a snack. None of these things count in her consumption of alcohol, beverages of any kind. Uh, my home ec teacher, whenever I was in school, called them empty calories. Any of these things that don't have nutritional value of any kind, but we consume are empty calories. So we need to always remember that if she says she had a salad for lunch and that's all she had, she is omitting a great deal of food and drink consumption most likely. So keep that in mind. Another thing that women are deceptive about notoriously is cosmetic procedures. So Botox, fillers, um, the any kind of cosmetic procedures that are maybe not quite so obvious. Clearly breast augmentation is often um, one that is there's at least evidence of even if they look very natural but i know a lot of girls who got nose jobs early in their adulthood or late in their adolescence and completely never mention the fact that they've gotten one uh but i don't think she necessarily tries to hide this but blake lively is a great example of a woman who whose appearance was greatly positively affected by getting a nose job early in her career. She is a beautiful woman. I'm sure she would have been a beautiful woman no matter what at this stage of her life, but she got a nose job and I'm sure she doesn't shout from the rooftops every time she enters a room, hey guys, look at my nose job. It's just not the way we operate. We are deceptive about things. We try to hide the things that we don't necessarily want the world to know. Girls nights out, what happens at them? and what we talk about at them. Now, you guys know I am not a fan of girls' nights out. I don't think that they're a good idea. They're not healthy for uh, your relationship. It's just not a healthy environment. You can get the sweetest group of girls together, genuinely decent human beings, primarily happily married people, set them down in the middle of a bar or a restaurant, everybody orders wine, drinks, whatnot, and a few drinks in, it's like it's a totally different table. They all turn into 15 year olds. They're all seeking male attention in one way or the other. It's just not a healthy place to be. It's not healthy for your relationship and it's not healthy for them. You have to save them from themselves by saying no to girls nights out, unless you are somehow in control of the situation, in constant contact with her. She has a time limit uh, and she knows that she has to get herself home. So there are all kinds of ways kind of to give her a little bit of, of blowing off steam with her girlfriends without it causing detriment to your relationship because girls are notoriously uh, deceptive about what goes on at girls nights out. And then what they talk about when they're at girls nights out or even just with their friends. There's a joke that I saw on, uh, I think it was like a meme, but uh, the husband says, hey, look, you know, to the wife, let me see your phone. And she's like, okay, you know, he's like, I can go through anything I want. I can go through any conversations with other guys or anything. And she's like, yeah, of course. And he said, what about your, you know, and he like says, yeah, the, he's going to open the text chain between she and her best girlfriends. And she's like jumping for the phone. Girls will say the real stuff to their girlfriends. So if you're suspectful, sus suspicious of your wife or girlfriend that she is acting up, don't bother looking for, for messages with a boy that a guy that you think that she's messing around with. Look at the messages with her friends. She's less likely to be as cautious at deleting those and keeping those cleaned up. That's where the real information is. So if, if you're feeling like you're being deceived in a big way, like with cheating, be cautious and that's where you look. It is just girl world that we are a deceptive species. <laughs> it's, again, I wanna make very clear that I don't 
don't want to reveal the secrets of the sisterhood to upset you um, or to make you avoid or dislike women. You just need to understand that there are biologic and trained reasons as to why girls behave the way that we do in all areas of life. And then you can better guide and direct the relationships that you have and better avoid the negative pitfalls that are so easy for men who just trust what they see and just trust what their girls tell them uh, and, and don't really think objectively about the fact that men and women are very different individuals. So I want to help you better navigate girl world. I want you to better navigate girl brain and just understand where she's coming from and why she answers the way that she does to a lot of different things. Uh, I want you to win above and beyond everything else. Uh, I am waiting. It looks like Fort Worth may be typing something. We're communicating, like I said, at the, on the front end of this. He is uh, in a different location than I am. We are two hours apart. And so we're communicating by, by messenger. And he is communicating with you guys in the chat. So if there are any great, let's see. Here's a great question. Let's see. Cyclical vomiting syndrome. I think... They're asking if it's a real medical issue. Vomiting induced by stressful situations and without cause. Oh, okay. So vomiting, okay, so we have a question uh, if, if this is real. Vomiting, si si <laughs> I can't even say it. I can't even say it. Cyclical vomiting syndrome, which is essentially, it sounds like, stress-induced nausea and vomiting. Totally a real thing. This is a real thing. I don't know if you guys deal with this, but this is this is a stress response that girls have quite often. Um, it's just rough. You know, girls are not are not genetically wired to be under great deals of stress for a great amount of time. So whenever our central nervous systems are constantly bombarded with uh, negative stimulation, with stressful events, whether it be work-related, you know, family-related, deaths, whatnot. I mean, the body being sick. There are all kinds of stressful situations that can cause women to uh, kind of, kind of uh, weaken under the pressure of, of stress in their lives. So this cyclical vomiting syndrome that I was asked about is absolutely a real thing. I think more so than it is for men for sure, because we just aren't as strong at dealing with stressful events or our central nervous systems just being bombarded by stimuli and stress at all times of the day or night. So this is a real thing. Nausea, vomiting, these are, these are real responses to stress, especially for women. So yes, uh, that is a real thing. Um, I have, anytime that I've dealt with that, uh, or pardon me, or something like it, uh, I have been given Zofran, which is a super mild uh, anti-nausea medicine, super mild. It's a good thing to just have on hand if your girl deals with it quite often. If, if she's in a stressful job, if you cause her a lot of stress, if she's just not hardwired to handle stress very well, it's a good thing to have on hand so that when the nausea kind of starts, it's a very, very inert anti-nausea, uh, anti-vomiting medication that can be picked up very easily from a prescription. So that's what I recommend if, you're, if your girl either notoriously on a regular basis or just as in a season of her life right now where she's dealing with cyclical vomiting syndrome. I have to say it slowly or I can't pronounce it. But it's a real thing. Girls don't handle stress well. It has to come out somewhere. And a lot of times it's in the form of us feeling nauseous or vomiting. So, <laughs> what a great conversation. 
Uh, I, I'm hoping that none of you deal with any of this deception in your relationships or in your life. But if you do, I hope that this has helped. Uh, I hope it just helps you better understand how, how uh, girl world works and how girl brain operates. If you are suffering from um, a dip in your sexual relationship, whether you've been together for a year or a lifetime, I want to invite you to register for my Ignite Your Wife 30-day sexual reset course. It is going to be a great march of amazing content every day. You're gonna, you and I are going to be in constant contact when, with one another. You're going. It's going to include a physical workbook that I mail to you. You will get daily emails from me, daily videos email communications, and we are just going to get your sex life back on track. For the cost of a Starbucks run every day, you and I can have daily communication and completely change the course or realign the course of your sexual relationship with the person that you think that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. I want the rest of your life to be sex-filled, pleasurable, and enjoyable for both of you so that you can enjoy a high quality rest of, of your life. I want to thank Fort Worth Playboy there uh, at the home base in Fort Worth where he is monitoring your uh, communications and questions and comments and communicating with me. He uh, he makes me look good. He just, it's uh, all I can do to just giggle and, and smile whenever he's brought up. So thank you guys for communicating with him so much in the chat. I always have fun uh, going back through and reading everything that you guys have been talking about and discussing and asking about. Any, any topics that came up through conversation in the chat that maybe weren't suitable for this particular conversation, we often turn your comments and questions into podcasts. So when Fort Worth Playboy and I do our podcast each day, we love to field questions from you so that we know what you guys are wanting to hear more about and to get our take on. So keep asking those questions in the chat or in the comments below or DM us. <sighs> Whew. My incessant chatter is almost coming to a close. Thank you so much for joining me today. I sincerely enjoyed it. I am loving our Sunday mornings together. So if you're watching live, I genuinely appreciate you being here and making the time to, to meet with me and converse with me. If you are watching after the fact, thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for circling back and watching as you're, you've been able to. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments what your thoughts are, what you've run into, your stories about the deceptive women in your life, and how you've handled it, and how maybe you can implement these ideas in your own life. Thank you so much, and I hope that you have a great rest of your week. I want you to win!